We now arrive at reaction number 8 in our chapter 19 series, acid catalyzed decarboxylation. You see, if you have a carbonyl group that's beta to a carboxylic acid in your compound, you can remove the acid group by heating it up. In other words, we look at the starting material. It has a carbonyl that's beta to the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid group's highlighted in yellow. I can strip that by heating it up, releasing the carboxylate as, carb, uh, as CO2, carbon dioxide, and eventually form this product. This negatively charged carbon gets protonated in the quench, giving, uh, effectively removing the CO2 from the starting material. And this kind of chemistry can be applied to starting materials that look like this, a moronic ester. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I mean a malonic ester. This reaction sequence shown here, called a malonic ester synthesis, is pretty straightforward. First of all, I take this dicarbonyl compound, it's really a dicarbonyl ester, or a diester, uh, and I hit it with a complementary base. Once again, this base has to match the ester portion of the molecule over here. So complementary base strips an alpha hydrogen. Then that alpha hydrogen gets alkylated with an alkyl halide. And then I hydrolyze and strip off CO2 from one of these groups to ultimately arrive at this product. So what in the e am I talking about? Well, here's the mechanism. Once again, I begin with this malonic or moronic ester. I treat it with my complementary alkoxide base, and that base strips an alpha hydrogen. Remember, the reason I have to pick a complementary base is because if I picked an alkoxide base that had a different R group from the R group present in the ester, then it would just add into the carbonyl instead and do a transesterification reaction. In real life, it is adding into the carbonyl, even under these conditions. But any time it does that competitively, it just ends up regenerating starting material. So effectively, I stir my malonic ester with a complementary alkoxide base. It strips this alpha hydrogen, and gives me this enolate. This enolate is resonance stabilized into two carbonyls. This is now going to stir with my alkyl halide. That negatively charged carbon comes into the an uh, alkyl group kicks off my bromide and alkylates singly at that alpha carbon. At this stage, I'll heat my diester up with acid water, and it will remove the ester groups and replace them with OHs. You guys might remember uh, or think about the mechanism uh, being like ones that we've addressed before. Water comes into the carbonyl, electrons go up, electrons go down, and kick off an alcohol on both sides to generate a dicarboxylic acid. Now, I've drawn it kind of funny with this H down here, but that will, the reason for that will become apparent now that I show the mechanism. At this stage, as I'm heating this up with acid and water, and this reaction is called hydrolysis as we go from a diester and replace the ester moieties with OHs. Water molecule comes in, grabs one of those hydrogens, thrusts the electrons up there and bumps these electrons on to that alpha carbon. What products does it make? Well, you'll notice that if I take these electrons and close them like a door on a hinge, it forms a double bond between this carbonyl carbon and this oxygen. That product is carbon dioxide, CO2. You'll also notice that I end up with a negative charge on this alpha carbon. The only reason that this kind of thing is even possible is because it's resonance stabilized into this carbonyl. This is the reason why it only works for malonic esters, which are esters that have dicarbonyls here. This stage, the acid that's been formed when this water stripped this proton, then protonates this alpha carbon to generate my final product. So what is the net reaction? I start with a malonic ester, hit it with base, strips this proton, that negatively charged carbon gets alkylated with an alkyl halide, and then ultimately stir with water and acid at high temperature. It hydrolyzes both of these esters, converting them to OHs, and then one of those ester groups gets torn off as CO2 to arrive at this carboxylic acid product. Believe it or not, you can do this under dialkylating conditions. In other words, if I stir this with a complementary alkoxide base 
and an alkyl halide. I can singly alkylate here at the alpha carbon. And then if I want, I can take that product, isolate it, and stir it again with a complementary alkoxide base and a different alkyl halide. That will ultimately put two different alkyl groups on this alpha carbon. If I then stir that product with, oh yeah, I've shown that here. <laughs> See that? Isn't that cool? So I've alkylated once with one alkyl group and then alkylated a second time with a second alkyl group. If I hit that with acid, water, and heat, it hydrolyzes both of these esters to OHs and then ultimately removes one of those carboxylic acid groups as CO2 to form this dialkylated carboxylic acid. That concludes all the chemistry for chapter 19. So I want you to take a break, run around, stand up, sit down, uh, have an enjoyable day, and uh, gear up and rest for chapter 20.